Well, I'm really excited that you are here today with me on today's podcast because I'm doing the live coaching that I normally do just about once a month with one of my members from the Content Creator Studio. And today I am talking with Sherry Harad. Sherry is a podcast host, and I want you to tune in and listen for the clarity that she's looking for around her audience. I think that's what we're going to be talking about today. And when we get to the other side, I'm hoping Sherry has more clarity and focus and just feels really good about the direction that she's going. And so Sherry, I just want to say welcome. I'm so glad that you took me up on the offer to come onto the podcast. Oh, thank you, Jen. I'm so excited. It's such a privilege. Oh my goodness. Thanks. I'm glad you're here. So why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what brought you to podcasting? Well, I'm a, a gardener, a raised bed gardener. Mm-hmm. And what brought me to podcasting is that I have a, a one-year-old grandson and I wanted to Well, he gardens with me and I wanted to share some of our experiences and the benefits of him actually being in the garden with me to other parents of young children to start them out earlier than later. So how how long have you been gardening in your own life? I've been gardening more than 10 years. Okay. And I started out as um, a wildflower grower. So I just planted wildflower seeds and let them grow. And what my goal was, was to have the most beautiful yard in my neighborhood where I grew up. And so I, every year I just maintained the yard, planted more and more. And every year, even now people say, you have the most beautiful yard in the neighborhood. And not only in the house. Oh, oh, because this is not, this is the house you grew up in, not the house you live in. Right. Yes. Oh, that's so interesting. Yes. So when you get that feedback from people, how does it make you feel that you've created this out of, out of nothing, literally dirt and seeds? Out of nothing. It makes me feel beautiful. Mm-hmm. And, and it makes me feel like people in the community know me for a specific reason. And they also share what I do with other people in the community. So I've had maybe like four or five yard tours just from people coming up and saying, we heard about your yard. Do you mind giving us a tour? Because they can't see the back from the street. Right. So I give them tours and it's just amazing. You give them tours of this house that nobody lives in, right? Nobody lives in, but my sister and I own the house. It just happens to be vacant because my right. son and daughter-in-law used to live there. Okay. But even though it's vacant, I go over and make sure everything in the yard is beautiful. So tell me a little bit about what's the motivation for you, to, because I, I, what I'm trying to extract here is what is it about gardening that fills you up so much, so much so that you'll go to a house that you don't live in anymore and not only just do the front yard that everybody can see, but clearly there's a garden in the backyard that people want to get their eyes on. I'm just curious, like, what is the feeling that this, generates in you to have had this hand in your your hands in the dirt and then the the great ripple effects that you're creating with it well i think it makes me feel like i'm well first of all it's like a legacy Mm. like i will garden in that yard forever um, because i want to remember my mom and dad but i also want other people to see what they can do with actually initially no one watching Mm -hmm. so it's just and the beauty of it also the experimentation like i said i just plant the planted the seeds initially i didn't have a design and i did have people say you don't you don't know what you're doing (laughs) but they weren't they weren't doing it in a bad way they were just saying come on now come on do this do this in this way but i did it my way And now people in my family come back and say, this is beautiful. But what it makes me feel like is that there is a place in this world that is, if I have to say so myself and others say, it's absolutely beautiful. It's also peaceful. Um, It's quiet there. It gives other people something to strive for if they want to put in the work, because it's a lot of work, but it's, it's good work. And so I, I spend a lot of time doing it, but it's good time. Nice. Yeah. So 
you are personally fulfilled by it. And also it has ripple effects in the community. It, it has ripple effects in your family. It has ripple effects in other families. Yes. Okay. So I want to talk a little bit about, like, we know what your motivation is. It, you're very intrinsically and extrinsically motivated to, to make this garden and to share your knowledge with other people. Is that why you started the podcast? Well, I started the podcast because after the wildflower garden had, you know, began to thrive, mm -hmm. Um, my grandson was born recently, and I wanted to do something in front of him. So I started the raised bed garden at his house. Mm -hmm. And really, the reason I started it was because his mom is very, very intentional on making sure that he eats healthy. And so I wanted to provide real healthy foods. So instead of just saying he eats fruits and vegetables, I wanted to be able to say he eats homegrown fruits and vegetables and he loves them. But he doesn't just love them because it's homegrown. He loves them because he's involved in it. He sees his grandmother doing it. And his mother is very, very excited about what she gets to give him to eat. So when you're at this point with the podcast where you don't yet have a business from it. Really, the podcast is like a passion project for you, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to ask you to kind of think about you're at a point where you are feeling like there's something more clarifying is needed. Uh, and I, I, what you told me is it's an audience that you don't know exactly who your audience is, which of course, when we don't know who our audience is, it makes it really hard to create content that resonates with the right people or even plan content because we're not really sure who we're speaking to, right? Is that where you are? Yes. Okay. So tell me a little bit about what brought up this itch for you to clarify the audience. Like why now? What, what's changed for you? Well, my family, my sons, my two sons, my daughters, my twin sister, they, they're they also involved in what I do because it's so different from what they do. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're all in offices or working from home. And they always say, you can stay outside all day long. But my son said, he, they listened to all the podcasts and he said, mom, yes, it's beautiful, it's peaceful, but we want to know the process. Okay. So I started the podcast initially just talking about my feelings about the garden and the benefits to others. And then I started to change somewhat too this is what you can do also, but there's some steps to it and there's some skill to it um, that you can develop for yourself. So it's fine for me to have it, but you can have it also. And here's how. So when he brought that up to you and said, people want to learn your process, that kind of turns you into a teacher versus a hobbyist or a like a passion, you know, it's a, instead of a passion focus, it's more of like, okay, if I have to talk about process, then I'm going to be teaching people. So let's just extrapolate this a little bit more. When you think about using the podcast as a way to teach people, and we're not even sure who those people are yet, right? Like, are they grandparents? Are they parents with little kids? Or is it anybody who wants to learn gardening in general? Um, when you think about that, where do you get tripped up? Well, I, I have been a teacher. I homeschooled my two youngest children. I was a fourth grade special ed teacher. And so I know the process of teaching, but when it comes to this, what I love to do, I always start to think everybody knows that. Yes. Like who can't plant a seed and wait for it to grow? Right. And to me, it just, I just get stuck right there. Like, what do people need to learn from me that they can't do on their own? Right. This is so true for everybody though. You know, so I'm a content expert and I sometimes think like, okay, we're, we're all native English speakers. Like we're just talking about the things that we're good at. Why? Like what the, what the hell will people think is so hard about this? But as you know, like being part of the content creator series, like it's not, it's not easy, right? Like this is all these nuances. And so I think that sometimes when we're mired down and being an expert in something, we forget that there are people who are still at step zero or step negative one even like maybe they haven't even come to understand that gardening is a way to achieve some peace and harmony and have ripple effects in their own life so um i think that 
you are at a very normal place where you're like, what could I possibly teach people that they either couldn't find on YouTube or right. couldn't read in a book? Is that is that what you're stuck with? Yes. Okay. And then again, Jen, there's so much to, to gardening that I'm thinking, where do I start? There's no real set starting point. Right. But I can't bring myself to just start in a place where I believe maybe the middle. Mm -hmm. And not yeah. Well, remember something that might help you with that is, and that's the teacher in you, you know, because we as teachers are trained, you, you have a unit plan, you break it down into lesson yes. plans, you break it down into days, it's all very linear. But mm -hmm. when people find us on their journeys, it's very zigzaggy, like they might find us for example, somebody might not find you until episode 56, right? And they're just going to meet you right where you are and you're going to meet them right where they are at that day. So we don't have to worry so much about presenting our content in any particular kind of order because first of all, the people who see it or when they consume it, like we, we don't have control over that. So it's different from a classroom in that way. So that might be something you could let go of a feeling stressed okay. out that like, if I decide to teach people how to do this, where do I start? Okay. Yeah, you don't have to I agree about. with that. Yes. That's <laughs> <helpful>. <laughs> okay. So let's yeah. talk about then um, you're comfortable with the idea of being a teacher. What, what are your goals for the podcast? Is it to remain a passion project or do you want to turn it into a group coaching program or a group teaching program or a membership or something? Or is there something else you want to do with it? I want to start a membership. Great. And I've actually, you know, started on that, but I'm at the beginning of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I'm also starting to wonder if the podcast is the, the right platform for me, or should I add another platform where I can go ahead and give those little tips without a long drawn, drawn out story on the podcast? Hmm. How long are your podcasts right now? They're generally between 10 and I'm going to say 14 minutes. Perfect. Um, but I, but I have to figure out how to focus in on one. I do talk about one topic, but I think it's way too much because okay. I want to um, focus on beginners. Okay. So what I've heard you say so far is I want the, the so, we'll just back up for a second. I, you can't have your membership. You can't have your business until we decide who your right. audience is. Right. And so that you're, you're in the right space. Like, you know, that you need to figure out who this audience member is. Yes. Um, we, what I've heard you say so far is this audience member is a beginner. Yes. They have a desire to garden. There's some, they're, they're already interested in gardening. Like you're not at the point where you want, you don't want to convince people that gardening is the way you want to meet people who are curious about gardening already. Well, I want to meet people who have young children mm -hmm. who have this idea in their mind of the life that they want to give their children outside of academics. So they want to enrich their children's lives but i'm not necessarily sure they've said i want a garden in order to do that and maybe they have because some have and then some haven't that's why i'm not sure which one i really want to target so these people in addition to um they're, they're, they're parents or grandparents yes and they want to connect with their child outside of the classroom Yes, and take them outside of the TV, the laptop, the phone. Yeah. Okay, so these are parents who are really interested in getting their kids off of a screen and out into the world and hands in the dirt. Mm -hmm. And sh get rid of some of the stress. They know that, but they haven't said, and I know that a garden is the place mm -hmm. necessarily. Mm -hmm. They don't know that a garden is the place necessarily. Yes. Okay. So you could be targeting parents and grandparents who are looking to connect with their child, home, grow their food, reduce their stress. Yes. These are the qualities of the person that you're looking for yes. and the tool that you're using to help them de-stress and connect and get their kid out in nature. The tool that you're using is the garden. Yes. Okay, so are you already starting to see that you've got a thread of an audience? So these are parents or grandparents who are looking to connect outside in the in the in nature, right? And they are also looking to de-stress. I don't think I have that audience. Mm -hmm. Well, not yet, but that's not yet. that's what you're saying. That's is that the yeah. audience that you're looking to cultivate? Yes. Okay. And they really don't know how to do that. Right. 
they don't know okay. how. Okay, so when you think about these people, and we're, we're just like kind of in the very beginning stages, like you're at an interesting point because you are at the very, you're, you're at like a point where you could really launch and develop this audience. So yeah. there are people who, there's some very clear things here. They have kids. Yes. Are the kids toddlers or elementary school age or both? I'd say starting at the toddler, right? In the toddler range through, I'm gonna say elementary. Okay. So there, there are people who are in it with little kids. Yes. Okay. Um, what do they want the experience for their kids to be? The first experience they want is for their children to eat healthy. Okay. The second experience they want is for their child to be outside more. And the third thing that they've noticed is that the child seems somewhat anxious, but they don't know why. And they want to show the child calmness, mm. maybe peace, maybe fun and mm -hmm. play. So those three experiences. Those are, those are big, clear outcomes, right? Like I help parents, you know, basically you're saying, I want to work with parents who there, you keep coming back to the primary thing being eat healthy food, right? Yeah. Homegrown healthy food. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then the other outcome that they're looking for is to get their kids off screens and into nature, like being yeah. outside. Okay. And then the third thing, which is, I think more of a byproduct but yeah. it is something parents are looking for is this stress reduction or anxiety reduction in their kids. Right. Okay. Yeah. That seems pretty clear. How does that feel to you to have those three things named as results that people can get? Seems clear now. Okay, good. But before we, before we started to speak, it wasn't clear. Yeah. Like I didn't have those three things yeah. that were outcomes. Okay. So, uh, cool. Um, so if you were thinking now about these three outcomes, one of the things I know you were noodling around with is, is it parents? Is it grandparents? Is it general gardeners? Who are you feeling like it might be now if we take this like even up like 10,000 feet, who's the general person you think? I still am not sure that it's one person. I think it might be a person who cares for a young child, person who's a caretaker of a young child. I love this because then we move away from the idea of demographics, like parents 30 to 30 to 45 who have a, a, a toddler through a school age child, like that's a demographic, mm -hmm. but what you're doing is much more descriptive, right? Like I, I help you if you're, if you're a, if you're a caretaker of a young child yes. and you're looking for a way to get your child to eat healthier, uh, reduce their anxiety and connect more with nature then my podcast is for you. Yes. Okay, how does that feel and as an audience? I think we might might add and connect more with their their caretaker or family. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because a lot of people feel like they may be disconnected or they may become disconnected. The garden's always a place to connect. Okay. So that, yes. So the other thing that we just kind of um, talked about in those four things that you're talking about, those are kind of content pillars too, right? Like. I can talk about the garden as a place to connect. I can talk about the garden as a place to home grow healthy food, as a place to reduce your anxiety and a, as a place to uh, get away from screens and connect with nature. Yes. So those could be four things that you just kind of circle back to all the time, you know, in podcasts, in, in I know you're on Instagram too, and in your posts, you don't have to nail all four of those things in every podcast or every post, but there are certainly things that you can kind of cycle through. Okay. How does that feel? It, it feels good. Okay. It feels good. I just was going around in circles about who's my audience, who's my audience. And it was just too many options that would, those options would actually be too narrow. Like, like it's just like to me an example. as a child. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So tell me what, tell me what was tripping you up before where you're clear now. What was tripping me up before is that I've been all of those people yeah. like mother, grandmother, gardener, 
And, and so I wanted to say, this is you. But I also knew that I, the child had to come in somewhere, but that's two different things. So why don't I just say it's about the child? Hmm. It's about who, who cares for a child. Okay. So really it is about who cares for a child and wants these particular outcomes. Yes. Okay. And that's the game changer for you that you feel like that's what's making it clearer for you? I think what really is making it clearer for me is to make a decision. <laughs> to make a decision. <laughs> okay. So what decision have you come to or have you come to a decision? Yes, I've I've come to the the decision that what we just said, it's a caretaker of a child who wants these outcomes and that I can do it in four pillars of the using those outcomes mm -hmm. and stop trying to figure out how to organize the the vast material that I have. Right. So I was thinking, talk about growing seeds, talk about seedlings, mm -hmm. but that's really not the outcome. That's the tool. Yeah. That's, that's the you process. See. Yes. 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 So you can think about how to weave in your process with yes. a lesson, for example. So say you okay. wanted to talk about seedlings. And of course, I, you know, I'm not a gardener, so I'm just okay. making this up a little bit. But like, say you wanted to talk about indoor seeds that you plant probably what, February? Do you put your indoor seeds get started February. in March? Yes. Okay. February. So you so you could talk about um, this thing that we're going to do in February. Here's some tools that you need to get started. And here's how this will help get your kid away from screens. Like you could kind of weave your process in, but always link it to one of your content pillars. Okay. You could tell okay. stories about your own grandson, right? Like your own experiences or your personal experiences or even experiences of things that people tell you, like your friends who are dealing with the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. But you can always tell the story that leads into your outcome and it's never going to be the same. In fact, you could talk about seedlings all month, but you could talk about them in a way that they reduce anxiety one week, maybe another week you're talking about it as they helped me connect with my one-year-old grandson as I'm watching him like go through this exploration process mm -hmm. or like the set or another week might be the satisfaction that he had. And I could see his anxiety reduce. Like you could really mm -hmm. talk about one of the parts of the process for quite a while, since you've got four different content pillars to kind of lean on. Mm -hmm. How does that I, feel? Um, that feels good. And I was wondering if framing it more instead of me saying what I said that their children feel stressed to say, this is what you will see in your child. Patience. Yeah. Um, calmness. Yeah. Um, and so more of those positive aspects from right. planting a seed, you have to wait. Right. You just have to wait. <laughs> Yeah. And they will wait. This this is what I did when my grandson, we wanted to plant something on Sunday. And I thought, we're, we're going to plant a seed. But he's 15 months old. So then I said, he doesn't really care about planting a seed. But what if I take a flower and a seed? Mm -hmm. Then he'll get some concept of this is what it will become. So you are, be you're modeling the, the intentionality behind mm -hmm what you want other parents and grandparents and caretakers to do when they're using gardening as a way to teach and connect with their children. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'd like to do. Yeah. So there's a lot of words that we're coming up with today, like intentionality and purpose and uh, connection and re reduction of stress and anxiety, calmness, patience. There's a lot of themes that are coming up that you can just talk about in your podcast. But one of the things you mentioned at the beginning of our chat was you weren't sure if podcasting was quite the way. And so after getting some clarity at this point, how are you feeling about moving forward with the podcast? I think it it may be the way in addition to something else. Okay. Like I feel, I think I feel more comfortable giving little tips mm -hmm. on a platform like Instagram. Huh? So I, I, I think I'll try both mm -hmm. since I'm pretty comfortable with the actually producing the podcast now. Yeah. I just want to change the content to be more cohesive. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. not talking about something different every single week, but having right. some 
so people can understand what I'm really trying to bring out. Well, one of the things, if you are looking to make it more cohesive, your your expertise really lends itself to a seasonal kind of theme, right? So again, like if we were talking all in February, it might be all about seedlings and what you need to do to create seedlings and some of the outcomes you might be looking for with seedlings and talking about, but now that we're in May and June, what is something that could be a little topic or a bigger topic that you could break down into some littler pieces that might get you three, four, five weeks of content? Mm -hmm. Like what's going on right now in the gardening world? Um, the weather is changing. Most people have been um, holding back because of the weather. So we could talk about, again, um, uh, letting go of controlling. So, and we can also see what happens when we are not able to do that because a lot of people already planted their warm weather seeds and seedlings and we had a, a frost and a cold period of about one or two days and then people were so stressed and overwhelmed that all their stuff is gone. But we know the inference, we have the information, we just want to do it our way. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for children, I think it's a good thing to, to show them, you can do it your way. Because I don't tell my grandson, oh, you have to do it this way. But the consequences, the outcome mm -hmm. are going to be something that you may have been able to avoid if you have certain qualities or characteristics. So you as a teacher, this is your teaching. This is your teacherness coming out. This is okay. you being able yeah, to like see a thing that's happening and make a lesson out of it. And if the more I think that you lean into that, cause that's your, you know, you, you have experience and, and training in that. And it, it might be dormant because I don't know the last time that you stepped foot in a classroom, but it's part of who you are. And it's even coming out in this, in this conversation. Okay. Are you starting to, see, I hope you're starting to see it. I'm starting to see it, but I, I, I have a question. Sure. Does anyone else really want to hear all that? That's yep. always my question I ask myself. Yep. Well, I'm going to, my dad, my dad always says this horrible thing, which is true. He says, uh -huh. there's an ass for every seat. And it is true uh -huh. that there, that there is somebody to sit there's a butt for every seat. There is somebody to sit in every seat. And uh, we might not know who your audience is or where they are, but the more clear you can get, like we talked about at the beginning of our conversation, like this is who this is for. And I'm always speaking to this person and I'm always naming this person and I'm always talking about the outcomes. And then you ask people to share it and you use the hashtags on Instagram and you name your, um, you know, the descriptions in your podcast, like are things that those people are searching for mm -hmm. are going to be really helpful. Okay. And, and yeah, there are people who you take for granted mm -hmm. that your knowledge is like a given, but honestly, there's people who haven't even thought about this connection of gardening being a tool to connect with our kids as young as age, you know, one, yeah. and that is going to be a new idea for a lot of people. And so don't take that for granted, I guess I would say. Okay. I'll, I'll do that. I won't <laughs> take it for granted okay. at all. Good. So what do you think your big takeaways are so far? I think my biggest takeaway is to focus more on who I want to help rather than what I think I know about what I do. Mm. Meaning if I want to help people, I have to see it from their perspective. Mm -hmm. And I have to understand that just as much as I would have wanted to grow into this. There are other people who, who do also. But like you always say, Jen, the messaging has to be such that those people are attracted to what I'm trying to say. Right. One of so, the things I would have, and I don't know if you've done this yet inside the studio, is mm -hmm. there's a training on how to get inside your audience's mind to figure out the exact words that they're using and the phrases. Have you done that training yet? I don't think I've done that. Okay. Yeah. So I would look under that. It's under the audience attraction module. Okay. And okay. you're going to find there's step-by-step -step tools to get you to do. Basically, it's talking to people who you think are your right people. They're going, and you're, there's 10 questions in there. I can tell you, you can, they tell you what 
I tell you what they are, so then you tweak them to yourself. But but basically, it's a way to talk with people who are in your audience or would be in your audience and find out like what words are they using, what problems do they have, what solutions are they looking for, how is this problem that they have like affecting their whole life. And when you do that, they're basically like validation calls. It's a total game changer for your content. So I would spend some time now that you know. And you can imagine who that person is. I bet you can think of five or six people just in your immediate circle who you could chat with about that. Probably your your daughter or your daughter-in-law being one of them. Yes. Okay. Yes, so I would I would do that as a, the next action step. Okay. I'll okay. do that. Yeah. Thank can you. I talk to you a little bit about how your experience inside the membership has been and how like what it, how has it affected you? Oh yeah. The first time I met you was when I heard your podcast where you spoke with someone else who's in the membership mm -hmm. and I was just captivated by the way you carried her through um, her thinking. And then I joined the membership mm -hmm. and then I found that the way that you do that to me seems like magic oh. because <laughs> I've heard, yeah, because you can do it for everyone. Like, it's not just, oh, this is a subject that I'm familiar with, so I can do it for one person. And so inside the membership, when I'm there and I hear you speak to people and just get them onto that messaging, mm -hmm. it's, I mean, it's captivating to me. And I always said to myself, I wish Jen would do that for me really in a, you know, during a period of time because you've helped me inside the membership. And I was just saying, I want more, more, more of this. So thank you for today. You're welcome. I'm really glad you took me up from the offer. Oh yeah, I jumped to the offer. The other thing is I love going into the, the rooms with people in the membership because I find that um, they've always immediately changed my perspective. And so right now, when I say I have to just make a decision, it just comes down to make a decision. I have everything I need. I've received that from the membership mm -hmm. and I just have to now decide. Mm -hmm. It's not about not knowing what to do. It's just about putting it together and doing it. The other thing I like is the 55 minutes where yeah. we get the implementation to hours. Yeah, those are great. It, yeah. It's great yeah. because to me, it seems like your 55 minutes allows me to do way more than my own 55 minutes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, I can just get it done because I know you're going to come back and we're going to be here saying, you know, I, it holds me accountable. Yeah, so yeah, I say yeah. to myself, Sherry, did you really get it done? Are we just going through the motions of reading more and learning more because I'm a learner? So I need yeah. to get stuff done. Yep. Yeah, I love that. I Thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, I also love your sense of humor. Oh, Some people may not catch it, but I do. <laughs> I love thank it. You. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, the reason I wanted to have you on was because you, I love to ask the people who show up in the membership super regularly and I see are putting it in, but they're like, there's just one little like switch that we need to flip. And that, that, that is you this month. Like I, I was going to invite you because you show up to the calls, you are doing the things. And I know that this was just this like murky place that I feel like once you have clarity, you're going to be able to take so much action on what's next. I'm yeah. so excited for you, Sherry. Thank you. And You're thank welcome. you for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. I'm really glad that you got some clarity, that you feel good about this, and that you have some action steps to take and move forward. And then once we get your audience ready to go and clear, then the membership will start to feel so much easier to you. Yes. Yay. I think so well, thank too. you, Sherry. Thank you, Jen. My pleasure. Okay. I always want to encourage people who are struggling with their message or their content to actually get some support because it's so hard to do it on your own because you're just in the silo of your mind. So like in like a half an hour, Sherry got this all clarified. So I just want to say, you know, bravo to you for showing up and being coached because it's, it's kind of vulnerable to do this work publicly. So I just want to, I just want to give you some claps for that. Oh, I loved it. Thank you so much. <laughs> you're so welcome. Okay, everyone, thank you for showing up and for, um, I hope that Sherry's work helped you get some clarity too. And I will see you on next week's podcast. Bye everyone. Bye Jen. Thank you. Bye.